Hey everybody, Will here with this week's interview chair. So sit back and relax and listen to Mr. Philip Booth. Hi, everybody. Will here with this week's interview. And guess who it is? It's uh, my dear friend, Philip Booth. I've known Phil forever. How you doing, Phil? Doing well, Will. How are you doing this morning? Good to see you, man. Look how relaxed you look. Retirement done you well. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, a lot of calm, a lot of difference. That's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. I know. Calm, calm is good. It's good for us. You know. And yeah, stress, it's, stress after, our, after the lives that we've led over the years, uh, Calming down is good for you. Oh, exactly. You know, and then you, and then you you see the, the the things going on around. You think, oh my god, how did I do that? I remember going to a show and, and setting up with Adam. I just had my Irish setter with me, and they put like thirty dogs in the X pens. Right. I felt like throwing up. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. At the time when you're doing it, it's just fun and normal. And then oh, exactly. take a step back and whew. I'm telling you, anxiety kicks in. Right. Oh, right. Right. So we're gonna uh we're gonna find out all about Mr. Booth today. Okay. Tell me how did you get started in this wonderful world of dogs, Philip? Well, that's a that's a good story. Um it I like good stories. Thirty, I guess it was nineteen eighty four. So that must be what thirty six, seven years ago. Um, I was watching Westminster on television. Yeah. Um, I was born and raised in the metropolitan Detroit area. Uh, at that time, re- recently married, and uh, we were watching Westminster Kennel Club on TV, and uh, which obviously would have been Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And um, saw the sporting group and saw Gordon Setter in the group. And I thought, wow, that's really a pretty dog. And we had talked about getting a dog. We were about to have a family. First son was about to be born. And uh, so we talked about a dog. And uh, anyway, long story short, Detroit News came out the next Sunday. I looked in the classifieds. Gordon Setter's. Oh, cool. So I drove out about an hour away from me to this lady's house. Um her name was Linda Houston. I'll never forget her name. And uh, she had a litter of puppies. At the time, she was breeding with, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, D, D. Franzak was her name at the time. I think it was, it's Veda now, maybe. She had Show Jean Kennels. Oh, okay. Uh, I remember that one, name. Once, yeah. once I got into it a little bit, you know, uh, Pam Shar showed dogs for her setters. You would know Pam, obviously. Oh, for sure. Um, so she was... She wasn't very super well known or, or had uh, a lot of history, but the people affiliated with her or her mentors did. Anyway, I go out there, going to buy a companion dog. At the time, it was still called a pet, not a companion, you know. Um, and uh, I was looking, and she had the dogs, and, and I knew nothing about purebred dogs, nothing about dog shows. Never been to a dog show in my life. Never saw one. Never nothing. So she had these dogs and two separate X pens. Um, three or four over here and four or five over here. And and, uh, she said, here, these dogs are the dogs that are available for pets or whatever. And, uh, and I said, okay. And she said, you can pick. I said, she said, uh, um, I'm just now starting to place these dogs with people. So you you can pick whichever one you want. And I wanted a female, I thought, and I did. Um, but then this other group of dogs over here in this other pen, these other three or four, they were active and kind of, not that these weren't, but I just kept getting drawn back to this other pen. And I said, well, what if I want this one? What about, what if I wanted this? Oh, that's one of my show dogs. I said, I said oh, and I'm thinking, show dog, what's that? I seriously didn't know, right? So uh, I'm thinking, uh, oh, okay. So, and as the time went on and we talked and she's a lovely lady. And I just kept going back to that bitch over in this other pen that she called show dog. 
And I said, I finally said, and in the back of my mind, and this is kind of, I don't know, but it's true. This is a true story. I'm kind of thinking, okay, lady, I just drove an hour from Pleasant Ridge, Michigan to get out here to Highland and, and buy a dog. I'm going to buy my dog and I'm going to go. And what are you going to do? Chase me down for this dog, <laughs> right? I mean, I had no knowledge of finishing, nothing, right? So I'm thinking in my head, well, I'm just going to buy this dog and take it home like you would from, you know, the grocery store <laughs> or something when you buy it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, a long, long story, tried to make shorter. Uh, she agreed to sell me this show dog on a co-ownership with her. And I knew nothing about that at the time. And um, she was a lovely lady, lovely, lovely lady. So fast forward, had the puppy. She's calling, checking on the puppy. I'm asking questions. And I did some research. You know, there was no internet then and no, nothing like that. But I started asking some questions about people that, that she had referred me to. And she said, well, you know, we're going to have to hire a handler to finish the dog. I said, oh, OK, whatever. Uh, at the time, I was still working for my dad in the automotive industry and yeah. race cars and stuff. And I said, OK, cool. You know, we'll hire whatever needs. And uh, she said, but if you want to, uh, when she gets old enough, you can take her to some handling classes. And I'm thinking handling classes what what's that you know so anyway got a relationship with the lady drove out there she taught me a little bit about trimming and maintenance you know to keep them straight and then when when the bitch got old enough i went to my first handling class and my first handling class was at uh what did they call that place i don't remember the name of the place sportsman's maybe or something like that but the, the best part of the story is the lady running the class was Debbie Zink or Marie Zink, the Dalmatian lady who 25 years later, I'm putting best in shows on a Dalmatian that she bred. Oh, she did a five. good job teaching you how to handle it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now she's reaping the benefits. Right, right, right. Over here. Yeah, either that or that damn guy that I trained, you know, now <laughs> No, but that that's how all that started. It was wow, just that's cool. by accident, took it home, watched it on TV, and, uh, you know, went from there. Uh, like I said, I never had uh, any affiliation with shows, juniors, or any working or anything. Um, and uh, But my father, through drag racing, had taught me that, um, and I don't f didn't end up following this rule very closely as I my career continued, but he taught me that you learn more with your mouth shut and your eyes open than you do. <laughs> so when I started going to shows and stuff, um, I, I I just sat and watched. I mean, I think it was different back then. Will you? We didn't just go to the show and leave after. No, you're right. Dessert winners, bitch, or something. You sat around and watched it, and and yeah. I find myself very, very just like you. We're similar age. Of the people that we got to, in my case, I didn't get to work for, but I got to watch at their craft and i think yeah. those were in in the the eight, late 80s 90s i think those were some of the best i mean that doesn't oh, di that, uh, yeah. diminish you know we don't diminish what we have now but but that was i mean it, when i went to shows in the michigan area i got to sit and watch um tom glassford george ward you know uh kenny murray in the midwest you know uh, uh dick cooper i mean you know all these people that yeah that we both know were, were at the top of their craft rock you know? stars in our eyes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, that, that's how I got started. And then I developed, um, I, I like competition. Anybody that knows me really well. And, uh, <laughs> my wife will even say that if I could put engines on baby strollers, I'd be racing my grandchildren around <laughs> <laughs> like the competition a little bit. So yeah. anyway, um, I enjoyed the competition of dog shows. It was a big learning curve for me. Um, growing up in a sport like uh, NHRA drag racing, that is a very um, well-defined win or lose. Okay. If you follow the rules, if you work hard, if your car makes the most power and things don't break, you get to the finish line for it. You win. Right. It was, it was, um, it wasn't subjective. Right. It wasn't like, uh, you know, and, and I, when I talk about things, I, I'm not always the most finessed in words, <laughs> kind of. I, I'm, I'm more of a very black and white person. Um, I, at least I think I am. And uh, 
you know, it, you have to get into your head that it is just an opinion. You know, you're, you're asking for someone's opinion and, and you're going to get it. You may not agree with it or like it, but it is just a, there are no absolutes, you know, and in, 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 no, in if there were, we could just punch you in the computer and see who wins. So, right. Your virtual show. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So that that was a that was a, a, a lesson that I had to learn. You know, because you you it's like I said, it's it's like the you know, back in the day, gymnastics, the Russian judge is never going to give the American a 10. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that doesn't really make them wrong. You know, they're, they're, right. they're, they're, it's yeah. just yeah. it's just that's just how that's it why is. I often refer to this as canine figure skating. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And the only thing we can't do on ice is, you know, fight like your beloved hockey players. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, dog shows are a non-contact sport. Yeah, right, most right. of the time. Most of the time, we've all had a moment or two, right? <laughs> all right. So you 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 got your Gordon Center now. And did who did you hire? Did you or did you just go right at yourself after handling classes? I ended up going right after it myself. Um, the bitch was was pretty. Um, you know, I, I one of my first dog shows was. Uh, it's things you know how things go they go full circle one yeah. of my first ever dog shows indoor dog shows was uh detroit kennel club oh wow good now way to I'm step a in. member right now i'm a member and you know and it was a it was a a major back then when detroit had the tournament of champions with i'm still oh. it was, you know you guys came canadians would come big big yeah. day and uh the five thousand dog dog show sometimes yeah Right, exactly. And uh, that was one of my first indoor events. I had my bitch entered in the American bread class. Uh, and I won a major uh, from the American bread. So I was hooked. You know, what's, oh, what's yeah. the deal? You know, what's, what's so tough about this, right? Yeah, it's nothing to this. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, where, where's the challenge, right? <laughs> no, but that, 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 that you know, that, that hooked me pretty good there. And uh, I went from there to... Um, uh, Showing some dogs for other people, you know. I still, again, still working for my dad, so I couldn't be gone a lot. Um, and I, I got some experience. Being the fact that I had to go to work and work with my dad, I would usually set up with. Once I got to know them over the years, I'd set up with people in the local area, uh, you know, because I had my one little dog, and uh, I befriended Tom and Andrea Glassford pretty good, and would set up with them quite a bit, and uh, learned a lot, you know. Oh, I'm uh, sure, learned, yeah. learned a lot, and uh, you know, obviously. Tommy and George were very good friends, so got thrown into that. And you, George was George, you know, <laughs> with his record and his his uh, love of dogs. But it was uh, it was um, looking back on it now, of all the people um, that I could have been affiliated with in my area, I'm, I'm quite honored to have had experience with them because they like them, don't like them, personalities, you know. Me- those two men love dogs. Yeah, in you this know, case, and, that was the that was the heyday of that those areas dog shows. And having right. George and Tommy and, and Dick show up and and right and Kenny was, you know, and, and right Kenny, and then it got Brian, a little farther. And, right, Brian still Brian yeah. still is in the mix there too. You know, um, yeah. it was, uh, and I'm sure we're missing somebody, but it, it was it was very fortunate. It's like anybody. You know, if you grew up on the East Coast, you had Peter and, and that crew and Bobby Fisher, and you know, you had the, the Hollow, the Roy Holloway. You know, so you you no matter where you were, there was always a core group of people. Right. They didn't travel back then like we not we, like we, they do today. It was more right, localized, and you right, had right, your area. Right. I remember right. stories about George. George didn't care if you came into his area to make a living with ten dogs. You showed up with one dog, he he he, you know, he'd get upset. <laughs> Because you're not <laughs> you're not just going to come in and try to steal Michigan's points, exactly. so. <laughs> especially the terror group, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, that that uh, you, you go back and think about things that happen, and, and it jumps periods of years. Um, but uh, I I think that uh, you know you you end up sounding like your father or your grandfather. Oh, those days, you know, I remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not like they but used to be. A lot of it's true. Really. <laughs> Back in the my old, day. Old, no. Right. The older I get, the more, I, the smarter my father is. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure how to take that, but. Uh, I know. Until we, so we start started wearing with, the socks and stuff. <laughs> exactly. So we started with the Gordon Setters, um, uh, bred a litter on that bitch and, and, and finished a couple. And then, like I said, I, I, I ended up some local people had dogs that, uh, 
that I started showing and helping out with and uh, um, campaigned a Gordon setter named Mike um, was the first dog uh, I did some winning with. I, I, you know what? It, it's bad because sometimes my years don't, what came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. You I know, know. Yeah. I believe, I mean, I, I had, I had traveled and befriended some people and helped show some dogs and, and won a couple of groups and, and, with other people's dogs, but my first, excuse me, my first best in show, uh, was an Irish setter, um, in Michigan. And it was, uh, what was that? No. Shay? What was it? Shady view. Shay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was 1995. That was my first best in show at, uh, at, uh, I remember Guys, that I dog. And Megan, yeah. Megan won the dog. Megan Veen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Shady view lady. And, uh, I'll never to this. The dogs, it's so funny because and I'm sure you're the same way. Sometimes you look at these dogs from 25 and 30 years ago and you kind of think, oh, that's not really what I like right now. <laughs> <laughs> or at the everything time. Everything evolves, right? You look yeah, at some well, past winners and you think, oh my, but everything yeah, evolves. It's, it's, yeah, it's a and, generational and, thing. So. Right. And I think our our appreciation for certain things or our priorities may change, you know, and what's important in a oh, breed, for sure, for you sure. know, and uh, like, I look at the best in show picture of that dog and I'm thinking, Oh, okay. You know, a lovely dog, lots of, but, but, and even, even dogs, even other dogs that, that through my career that I did some winning with um, uh, probably the, the Mr. Debonair dog, Kevin, you know, yep. um, I, he, dog. Se several best in shows and 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 uh was, was very competitive at the specialty level also um people would would have a um a, a critique of him and, and at the time i don't know if i didn't see it didn't want to believe it but my point of this is it is all these dogs when they end up retiring or, or be stop being shown and you, you really open your mind and you take a step back and you look you think, well, you know, they might have been right. I mean, if it's somebody that has some right. experience or, you know, yeah, that one's eyes, that isn't the most attractive thing on the dog. And, oh, and for sure. Like, like like that dog I showed, Impresario, was like 87. The dog over my shoulder, the iris there, the big portrait. Yeah, yeah. He was a lovely dog. Right. I wish I could have had him now when I knew more about the breed than I did then. Oh, I was a kid, you know? I think about that all the time. Even even when I was even in the midst of, of the wirehair pointer dog's career, uh back in 2012, I was I was thinking at one point somewhere, some point time at some show, I'm thinking, boy, I wish I had my Irish setter bitch now. You know, not not demeaning the wirehair pointer dog, but knowing yeah. what I know now and, and having met the people through the sport that have passions for dogs and want to support dogs. Had I had a little bit then with that one, that one, cause she did well on her own, yeah. you know, very and well. Everything changes. We've evolved in our, 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 our talent, our trimming, everything, you know? Yeah. It's, so yeah. it's amazing what these dogs did for us with us not knowing much. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Muddled through. And, and that just, that, that tells me, you know, those were some pretty good dogs. Uh, not that there's not good dogs now, I, I. But I try. I'm rambling on here, but that's good. I like rambling, <laughs> rambling, rambling, man. Rambling. rambling I, I, I pr approach this stuff now that I've retired and I'm contemplating applying to do some judging and stuff. I don't want to do a bad job. I don't want to do. Nobody does, but I, I don't <laughs> want to. I, I find that that uh, that there's a lot of negative. Not just fault judging, but even even the perception of of what's going on sometimes between judges and exhibitors and, and that. Oh, for sure, you know, I I think that that people need to be a little more open minded um, when you when you when you talk about dogs and 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 approach it from a much more positive attribute based opinion than what's wrong with the dog. Right, that's you know so I mean? easy to pick out what's wrong with dogs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And let's face it, familiarity breeds contempt. So when you're in the same area with a dog that just keeps biting your ass or beating your ass, and you're, you, 
you start picking on what's wrong with that dog. If that dog right. just showed up out of the blue, you'd probably go, oh, that's a nice dog. Right. <laughs> or if it was in your truck, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, on the truck. It's a magic truck. So as soon as it gets in the truck, exactly. it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Those rotten professional handlers, as soon as we start sending an invoice for it, it's the best one ever. That's right. <laughs> they, well, they come up the back ramp, they leave the side door, they're just the right. best dogs. Right. In the right. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. we joke about that, but it, it is pretty funny. It is but, pretty well, funny. you know, you have to get behind your uh your charges. So yeah, I mean if you're if if, if someone's paying me to campaign a dog, okay, I can do my very best for that dog without, you know, if, if I'm not, why why bother? Why, why, if you're not going to give them... Exactly. What, you're going to take, the, take their money and show their dog. You have to have some belief in that dog. Right, right, you know? right. And as as, your, as careers change and, 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 and things change, you know, you get, we all get to the point where, where we don't always take every dog we're offered. Right. And I, and I think that's a very um, legitimate thing. A lot of people, I'm sure you've had clients say, well, what do you mean you don't, you know, we all have yeah, um, you have to do and, that, and that's not necessarily to to you're you're too good or you're better than it's just you're giving your professional opinion you know it's no it's i find it no different than other professions whether it's oh. lawyers doctors anything you're, you're hiring me for my expertise or my abilities and if you if you don't agree with that then get another opinion or and and we, we as handlers can't be mad if, if if the 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 relationships don't click or the dog doesn't click or whatever you know but. sometimes the fit isn't right it just you know and yeah. it's it's like I hate, I hate in that sport analogy but it's like a player needs to leave detroit and come to toronto for a, a new fresh breath you know to right. start again you know? right sometimes change of scenery makes all the difference yeah. in the world and areas too let's face right. it there's some areas where the strength is a little different in certain groups and right. sometimes that dog needs to be in that area Right, right, and that doesn't really that doesn't really change the quality of the dog. It's just no. the, the what's going on around it. Yeah. But back to what I, what I would like to touch. <laughs> yeah, like on. It kind of ventured <laughs> off, which but is fine. Right. I like it. Yeah, back to back to growing up in the sport and people and and ways. Um, I I really really believe that um, you can learn a lot just by watching. No. Oh just by sticking around and, and well, there's uh, no question like I, I i i would i would run for my parents they couldn't find me so i could stay and watch things <laughs> exactly you know they'd be exactly. looking all over because they want to go because they lost our setters but i wanted to watch the sporting group or i wanted to watch bouviers or i wanted to right. watch you know yeah now that uh the sport has uh i mean i i jokingly talk about my my parents and you know i, I went to college and couple of hours short of a mechanical engineering degree and i'm sure when i first started showing dogs i'm sure they were so very proud you know <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll never forget I, i'll never get we were i just purchased uh, the boarding kennel there in michigan the maywill from judy russell yeah i remember started doing the the commercial kennel thing and uh and i went to shows and my i was visiting with my dad for some holiday or something and he said Maybe you are making a living. I, I got a car. I don't know. Something had happened, you know, and, and I, I had a little bit of money. And, and uh, he said, maybe that thing is a real job. Maybe you really are doing something. You know, because it, it was just nobody. It, it's just another thing that it, unless you're involved, like the day I drove to Highland, Michigan to pick up that puppy, I had no idea about AKC purebred dogs or all breed dog shows. Zero. Yeah. And then, you know, 37 years now, but. In the period, I mean, my career really started heavy, heavy, full time, like in two thousand and ninety eight ish, maybe I guess ninety nine with a kennel. Then I moved, uh, got rid of the boarding kennel, and moved out in a rural area in Michigan, and um, started a, a career there um, with my ex wife, and uh, um, we had a great run. I mean, it, it was did, great, yeah. great, great yeah. career. Um, could not have done any of that stuff. One person couldn't do that, you know, manage careers like that and stuff. But, uh, it was, uh, um, you meet so many and I'm bouncing from topic to topic. I forget where I'm going, but, uh, the people that, that, that showing dogs from driving to that lady's house to sitting here today, 37 years later, 
having made a living, put my kids through college, you know, um, had a career, a successful career. Who would have thought? Oh, you exactly. know? And, and mm-hmm. our sport of dogs, you, 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 you can meet people every aspect of life, as you well know, you know, and uh, I, uh, I was very fortunate to, uh, to have some great people in my life then and now still to this day, judges, clients, you know, and everybody does something different, you know? Yeah. So. No, it's, it's an amazing world that we've, we've been invited to, you know? Right. 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 So you, you, uh, you've, you won best in show with the, the, the Irish setter dog. Um, that was your first best in show, Megan's Irish setter dog, Shay. What was your next big dog after Shay? What, what dog do you think really decided that I'm going to stay doing this? I like doing this. Uh, well, there was a Gordon Setter dog owned by a lady named Kathy Rezepka um, uh, of Scimitar Kennels. Her and her husband at the time had that prefix. Um, and she had a dog that uh, uh, she liked showing herself, but ended up being a pretty good-sized dog and a little much for her. And I showed that dog, and that dog won quite a bit. Never won a best in show on it. He was, I believe he was number one Gordon Setter uh, one year or so. Um, I'd have to go back and look. Um, but that was the first dog that um, that I really had a client, had a goal. I thought I'd turn that off. Um, had a goal, you know, um, and wanted to achieve it, you know, with, for the client. So that was the first. He won quite a bit. Um but uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Mike. Scimitar, okay, Scimitar's <laughs> ultimate danger. <laughs> For some reason, I think I remember that dog. Uh, so. he, he was he he uh, he did a little bit of winning in the area. You know, he he upset the apple cart a couple of times. I think uh, probably one of the one of the biggest things was we were at the Monroe Kennel Club. I think it was Monroe then. It might have been Ann Arbor. One of those shows at the fairgrounds. That, and uh, Michael Faulkner had uh, that. Um, that QB QB gal, gal. That right, right, golden, golden bitch, yeah, right. beautiful golden She winning all the time, and uh, Virginia Hampton, if you remember, that, was doing the sporting group, and and I won that group, and it it might have been one of the first groups I won in the dub, but in the lineup and in the competition, you know, I it, it was to a point where I didn't know what I know now, but I, I was starting to learn, you yeah. know, that where the puzzle pieces fit, and you know. And all that stuff, and uh, and I'll never forget when that group and Michael, like, what, like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, but like you, like you, we we've all won some where it was a shock, and we've lost some where it was a shock. But oh yeah, yeah, they tend to balance out. With, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Then then from that dog, um, the first dog that I had, that uh, obviously all my stuff, sporting dog in the beginning. Um, the, the first dog that I had that really won and uh, won best in shows and, and was, a, was a top 10 sporting dog and everything, uh, a, co- a consistent career, was uh, the Irish setter, Mr. Debonair, Kevin. Yeah. Um, that dog actually came to me kind of by accident. Um, Kenny Murray was showing that the bit of gold Kirby Titan treasure dog. Yeah, it was kind of at the at the later stages of that dog's career, and uh, Leslie Russell, the Avon farm lady from Oregon, I, I'm not sure how Kenny got hooked up with that or not, but but Kenny had the Irish Setter dog, and also, and I showed he was in Michigan. I covered a dog for him in a group because he was winning with Kirby still, and it was a nice dog. Fast forward, they decided to keep Kirby out, and somewhere I was where I showed that dog, uh, Rick Shashudian saw the dog and said, kid, that's a real, you know, kid, hey, kid, that's a, that's a beautiful Irish setter. I said, well, it's not mine. It's Kenny. He said, well, you need to get that one. That dog looks really good for you. And I said, oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still never really had like a, I had a, my clients were all local based, you know, mm-hmm. showing local. I never really branched out to have, have a, have a client that I was going to do some traveling for and everything. And, uh, uh, the dog ended up going back to Leslie because Kenny ended up keeping the, the Kirby dog out another year. And uh, I got a phone call. I don't know. One day sitting at the kennel uh, and it was from Leslie Russell uh, about, was I interested in showing this dog? 
And I said, well, I've never done that. I never. I said, well, what do you mean? You know, she goes, well, I got a phone call from Rick saying that I should see if I'm going to do what I'm, I want to know what I'm going to do with the dog. And if I did it in the dog, I should send it to this young kid in Michigan. It's just getting started. And long story short, I ended up getting the dog, um, did a little bit with him. Um, at the time, uh, a guy named Jeff Wallace was owning dogs, Springers with Andrea Glassford and, uh, and showing some dogs with Andrea and Tom. And uh, he loved the breed. His partner loved Irish Setters, loved the breed. So it all just kind of fell into place. He ended up owning the dog. And, uh, and Kevin did. Kevin did very well. I think he ended up with, I don't know, 18 or 20 best in shows. And well, he was a lovely dog, Kevin. He was a fun dog. But yeah. there's two things that, that, that in my career, the bucket list that, I, that I've never done. And when I tell people, it's like, huh, never won an Irish Setter National. All, my, all the Irish Setters I've ever had. Never yeah. won an Irish International and never won a Gordon's International. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had neither until later. I'd, I'd almost almost on the verge of retirement before I did those things. So. <laughs> there you go. And it was the same thing. It was like, oh, my God. I kept going award of merit, award of merit. Best right. of I'd, win the, I'd win the host specialty and you know, right. win, lose the national. <laughs> exactly. But. exactly. So anyway, that was. Uh, it's not over yet, Philip. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Exactly. Now I'm doing these Legatos and Labradors. Maybe, maybe my days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's uh, it's it was a lot. Those dogs were good dogs and a, and a lot of fun. Yeah. That that Irish Setter dog progressed into um, the first wire pointer dog I showed uh, for, and the dog's name was Larkspur Darkwing Tie Dye. Tie Dye. That dog too. <laughs> yeah, she was. Uh, she was funny, and, and Jeff had was owning. Yeah. This, this is a good story. Jeff was owning um, Kevin. I already said it. We're in Canfield, and you obviously know Canfield hot, and we're all parked. And Tom and everybody, and Jeff comes in to watch the Springer and there, sir. And I, I told them a few weeks before. I said, "Hey, I got this dog." He said, "What do you want to do next year?" And I said, "Well, I got this dog uh, from this breeder lady here in Michigan, Wirehair Pointer Bitch. She was a uh, winner's bitch at the national, and." Uh, and Mrs. Clark put her up and blah, blah, blah. I said, it's a good dog. Okay. Well, I sh- he said, can you get the bitch and have her in Canfield? We'll take a look at it. And I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, sure. And I knew nothing other than what I'm talking about now. So I get the bitch from Gina, Ty, and she's a little purebred. Why are you like if somebody slammed a door in Los Angeles, she'd hit the deck in Columbus. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> well, she was very attuned. <laughs> she was she's a bit of a challenge. So we're, we're in the dog show and Jeff shows up on Friday or something. And we finished the dog show. And, and I said, Oh, let's see this. Let's see this. Uh, uh, wire pointer. And I said, okay. So I go into my truck and, and I, I get her and she's acting a goof, you know, just a goof. So, I come down the stairs to my truck and and she's you know looking around and get, get a little bit crazy and and she gets to the bottom of the stairs and just like sprawls out like you know like this. <laughs> and he just looks at me he just looks at me and he says he says you want me to spend money on that and I said yeah he said okay put her away <laughs> that was it and she ended up i mean she had just never been anywhere and just right, needed, yeah you know just needed some time and some comfort and you know get going from her home where she was born and raised and you know showed very little gina finished her at specialties only so she probably hadn't been to 10 dog shows in her life right so it but it was funny he said you want me to to spend on that and i said yeah he said and he, okay put her away let's go to dinner <laughs> And she ended up doing well. She, she did do well. He was a lot, she was a good bitch, no questions. Yeah, it was fun. But uh, so that was that aspect. And then, um, what happened next? Oh, probably uh, branched out, and uh, you know, I, I showed some dogs for some really great people. Um, uh, a lady named Marianne Reeder had Weimaraners in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, her handlers were. Uh, Jim Berger Sr. and then Jimmy Berger after Jim uh, retired. So she approached me. I started showing some wine runners for her. Um, I had uh, been in a, in a relationship and a partnership with Lisa Arnett, and we had cock, she had a lot of Cocker Spaniels you know, from Nancy Gallant and, uh, and some of those people. So at the time of, of some of these other dogs, we were, you know, involved in other breeds as well. So um, it, uh, it went full circle, 
I guess you'd say. Yeah. Just experience learning as you go, you know. And then, and showing those dogs in, in in Michigan area through those times. Again, we talked about, you know, George and Tommy and whatnot. I bet you had some pretty good times with those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some yeah, some great times. Played a lot of golf. Um and uh, had some dinner, some of which we can discuss, and some we probably can't. But uh, one, <laughs> one one dinner does That's come. Why to, I brought it up to <laughs> one, one dinner does come to mind. We were we were I don't know probably Ohio because that's typically where we all ended up at some point or another at shows. And it was myself and Brian Still, um, Tom, George, and then Sid Rimley, who was uh, Tuckaway Dalmatians, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, we're all sitting there for, for, I don't know why, like, uh, none of the female companions of, of any of us were at this dinner. I, I really don't know. Maybe we had just played golf. Probably we had just tried yeah, playing golf. Like it. Went to have dinner. So we're sitting around and... Uh, Did George uh, win? Well, jo- George, rest his soul. George, sometimes he couldn't count past five. He had a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> or he rearranged the team so they yeah, got. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he had some, the, 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 uh, it's like everything else. There were rules and there were guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the guidelines were a little gray. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, we, we were all at dinner and, and the top, some th- topics came up about, relationships and uh i don't know who said it but it wasn't me uh well fellas if we had to we could field a professional sports team offense or defense in the nfl with some of our past relationships <laughs> and i thought oh my god here i am, here I am. No one's listening <laughs> here i am the young guy you know yeah i'm married and was divorced once got some kids but geez oh pete am i gonna be like that you know but Come to find out, maybe closer than I thought. <laughs> but it's okay. And that, that, you know what, though, Will? That brings up, on a serious note, that brings up another area in in, in the sport or in, in even in life and religion. Changing that path, like that you or I and all the people in our path, whether it was clients, dogs, judges, friends, partners, you change one piece of that and you don't end up in the same place right, you are. Right. You know, we all have, or I shouldn't say we, I, I have things I wish I had done differently or, or, or at a different time, but there's a, there, when you take enough time and we talked about retiring and taking a step back to look at the quality of the dogs you showed or the past, you also give, give yourself to have time to, to, uh, to step back and look at your life. And, and, um, every aspect of it has a good, well, it's question. so easy to, to, to be negative or, Oh, that was horrible. You know, that that's not, that's not healthy. And that's not, it's not minimizing anything either. It's just, that's just your path, you know, and that's why you are who you are, where you are today. And, well, uh, thing, things come from your past that you never want to give up. Like, like, let's face it. Like, I, I, you know, I, I've, I have two boys. Two sons. Right. I have three, really, including Adam. I wouldn't have any of them if I hadn't been in dogs. Right. And they're the pride of my life, you know. Right. So, same yeah. with same with me. I mean, I have I have th- three grand three grandsons from my my boys. Um, Heidi's daughter has two boys and just had a baby girl about a month ago. And uh, you know, that stuff there is um, is. Uh, is what's really, I don't want to be the important or anything, but, but that's just, that's the foundation of a lot of stuff, you know, oh, yeah. like you, for me, I have a lot of issues and, and, and I'm not super happy that when we're doing what we're doing and traveling, it was no different than my father and myself when he was racing every weekend and gone, you miss a lot, right? you, you miss a lot. And, and uh, you know, you have to, you have to realize uh, what you're missing and, uh, and try and prioritize that. And then that, I guess if I said I wish something was different, I wish I wouldn't have missed so much, but you know, right. it, uh, yeah. everybody's good right now. Everybody's good. <laughs> exactly. You know, I got, I, I grew up the same way. I, you know, I was always not on my own, but you know, I was, there was, there was times where I should have had more, but kids are resilient and, uh, I, you know, you, you grow again, up. It doesn't, it doesn't have you, if you change the middle, 
the end isn't the same. Right. So were there things with my my boys and my daughter and stuff that weren't the greatest? Sure. But today, I, I tell you, I can look at anybody right now and, and my relationship with my kids and grandkids, I wouldn't want it any other way. Right. You know, it, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's all turned out. And they're they're great kids and a lot of fun and, and uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't have. I'm any. the same, but my my boys grew up and they're they're growing up to be the men I I knew they would be. You know, right, should, right, right, yeah. right. So back to dogs. Yeah, <laughs> that was too deep. Let's uh, get out of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I might hear Jerry Springer over my shoulder. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, me with another one. What's that? Hit me with another one. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, tell me about Aria. How did Aria come about? Aria was the Irish setter. The Irish setter bitch. She was bred and owned by uh, Shelly. We, we, we butted heads a lot with, with yeah, Aria yeah. and my dogs. And yeah, it's always yeah. fun to watch your career. So. Yeah. yeah, Aria. Uh, she was bred and owned by Shelly DeChambeau uh, and uh, her mother. Yeah. I knew nothing about the bitch. Never seen her before in my life. And uh, I went to, uh, and I don't know if I had Kevin still. Not really sure what dogs I had, um, but went to Ladies Kennel Club out east. And uh, there was an Irish Center specialty, maybe on Friday before Saturday, Sunday shows or whatever it was. Anyway, I got there and uh, um, setting up or whatever we were doing. And uh, I walked over to Irish Setters and I saw this bitch. I think she was 15 to 18 or 12 to 15. And I thought, holy man, that's beautiful. And uh, I went and watched her every day. And on Sunday afternoon, before, excuse me, before I was setters, I went to Shelly. I said, what are you doing with her? Oh, we're going to keep her in my mom. I thought, okay. And I said, I said, would you consider selling her? And she said, no, no, no. This is our, this is our bitch. We're going to keep her. So, okay. And uh, it was kind of like the very first Gordon Setter thing. I'm thinking, I'm going to buy that one. <laughs> I'm going to figure out how to do this. But I also knew you ain't going to just take that one home and not show up anymore. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I'll make a long story short. At the end of the weekend, we struck a deal, and I bought her. And uh, the rest was just, uh, she ended up being, uh, come to find out after I bought her, she had won two or three sweepstakes. And I believe, I know Kenny put her up, Wall, at a sweepstakes. Maybe, maybe it was at the National. I don't remember, but once I, I mean, I had her in my possession and I, I found out that some people that I really respected in the breed had already done for her as a puppy and at a young age. And, uh, I, that made me feel good. And, yeah. uh, you know, the rest, I, I, um, I got her and we, we showed her and she won, I don't know. She won close to 20 best in shows. No, no, God, she won. I think maybe 30. I don't know. She was number two sporting dog one year behind Kelly Springer. Uh, and that's a good story. You remember, remember, uh, was it science diet or Quaker Oats? It was top 10 all breed dinner. I think it was science diet was top science 10. Diet, right. Quaker Oats yeah. was just your groups. So, yeah. right. Science diet. So I'm all excited because I'm number 10. So I'm going to get to go to science diet, right? <laughs> this is what you, yeah, I don't remember what year it was. Anyway, I'll tell you what year it was. It was the first year they quit the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all year, my, my 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 condolences are okay. You're not going to be number one sporting dog. Kelly Springer is number one. I think it was uh, James, maybe or some, I don't remember which Springer she had at the time. Yeah, um, it was James. I remember the time. But, but you're gonna you're gonna be number ten all breed. So you got, you get an award and you're gonna get to go to a dinner. And I'm already planning. You know what we're gonna do. And sure enough, they didn't even have the dinner. <laughs> oh, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of kicking the. That was kind of kicking the butt, but. Uh, <laughs> But she was that bitch that I learned a lot with that bitch. Um, yeah. because uh, a guy from Ohio, a Rottweiler veterinarian named Bob Wicks, co owned her with me. Um, Jeff, Jeff was out of dogs, uh, at the time and not doing too much anymore. And, and I hadn't met, um, Victor yet. And, uh, nobody else really, I, I really was green to the find someone to sponsor or promote or back whatever word you want to use a dog so i just did it bob and i did it ourselves you know she had a limited amount of advertising limited amount of travel and she did really well you yeah, know she sure um, did but but i learned a lot from that one i learned a lot about uh about competition 
and and showing at that level. And, um, you know, I always tell people uh, as my career got along and, and, and we were showing dogs and, and people would ask more questions. Obviously, the longer you're around, the more questions they ask you. And uh, they start winning and, and you try and give them advice or young people will ask you certain things. And, you know, you just you want to say, you know, remember how it was. And this isn't I don't mean this cynically, <laughs> you know, but when you have a dog that, that wins a lot in your breed, your breed people get a little snarky or a little, little uh, chippy, a little right. edge. Then you go to the next level and you start winning groups and being competitive at the group. But then you've got your breed people and all the other people in your groups that aren't really super thrilled. Right. And then, then when you get to the best in showing nobody there really thrilled with you. So it, it's, um, it, it's, it's just something, it's not a bad thing. It's just human nature, you know, yeah. and, and, and you, but, but in order to be successful, you've got to learn that you've got to learn and not take it personal. There's, there's, there's times when people, and even everyone, myself included, if the right person says the wrong thing, it's a kick in the gut, you know, and uh, and it gets real personal. But you, you got to try and separate the personal from the from the business. And, and that's what Aria taught me a lot, because the, the, her second year, her first year uh, was good. I mean, she had two good years. But in the second year, it so happened that um, um, Jeff Arch came out with a windy bitch and he's in Pennsylvania. I mean, we yeah. competed in the breed every weekend, you know, and uh, she was uh, a lovely bitch, too. You know, it was yeah, it was, it, they, they were very different. They were very different in style. Yeah. I mean, they're both. That's another thing. Style and type, I think, are totally two different things. In right. my opinion. You know, they are all they all have Irish set of type. They're all no this. No, no, no arguing. They're Irish setters. Right. But I think within within type, you can have styles. Of and it becomes family oriented too. Right, you know, right, really right. Stuff. I mean, and everybody that knows me and Irish setters know that that I'm not a big fan of super fancy, you know, all kinds of angles. And I appreciate them, but if I get to pick something that's more, more my style, it's going to be a little less extreme. You know what right. I mean? And uh, but the, the the competition with um, with Jeff and Wendy that that was fun. That, that brought brings one story to mind um, that, that that today, I don't know, there's so little communication between judges and exhibitors. And the communication that comes, if people, if people don't pay attention or want to think poorly, it's always, oh, they're pimping their dog or they're talking about this win or the show next you know, that 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 uh, that that's a real bug of mine. It really is, because the more, as you know, the more success you have. Anybody, the more success they have, the more naysayers sometimes there are. OK, and, and uh, just to throw a little plug in, I've started writing a little bit for Chronicle and wrote a safety article last month. And I, I've got some more articles in the in the hopper that I'm going to I'm going to do. And one of them is going to be. Um, titled, uh, um, I haven't really figured exactly how I'm going to do, but um, preference or favoritism. And I, and I think that that's, you know, um, that's really important in, in judging dogs and evaluating dogs, you know, just because I'm sitting here, oh, back to the full circle, whoosh, shiny object, communication, communication with, with talking to judges and stuff. I, I think that's a necessity. I think it's a necessity that exhibitors and judges need to have open lines of communication because I don't know. There's, there's all kinds of things I want to learn about other breeds and I don't know. And, and why wouldn't you want to talk about it? But you have this, per, you have this perception of, of if you're talking to the judge, you're telling something bad about that dog or you're trying to win here. And, and my point was that the more successful you are, the more people think that. Right. And, I, and I can't and tell the you the reason why you're so successful. It can't be because of talent or good dogs or, or good dogs. Right. Dogs. Or, or honest, uh, honest judging. Right. It, 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 it's, I can, I can tell you and hand, hand to God, 90% of conversations that I would have, whether it was during uh, Kevin's career or Oakley's career or Orca's career or any of these other dogs, the, the, the giant schnauzers, any of these dogs, 
nine times out of 10, when I'm talking to these people that I've known or you've known for 25 years, you're talking about golf. You're talking about your kids. You're talking about your family. You know what I mean? It, it, it's it's just um, the taking it to a place of of favor, negativity or favoritism or anything like that. I don't. That's, I don't just. No. That doesn't mean things it's like that don't nature happen. To have people you like, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It means like I, I've, if you walked in the ring with someone. And you had the exact same quality of a dog, and I preferred you over that person. It's human nature. Right. You want to win the ties, right? That's got. That's kind of how I was taught from yep. people like Tommy or George, or you know, you, you can only hope to win the ties. You know, and and, uh, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, yeah. hard, it's hard for people to understand that they think there's something going on. Well, it's not. Right. It's human nature. Right. 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 So yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're going to go onward now. I want to know Oakley. Oakley, wire point. Yeah. Like, um, how did Oakley come about? How did you and Oakley meet? How did you and Kelly meet? How did how did it all come together? Um. Well, my perception, my memory is not super great. All the time. <laughs> um, um, I can tell you how it ended. <laughs> um. No, excuse me, but um. Uh. Obviously, I'd had my 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 um, experience with wire pointers with tie dye, and had met uh, just met uh, Kelly and Claire, uh, and and obviously being around Ohio, Helen George, right. the Rip Snorter lady. Obviously, she I saw her every weekend. Um, Tommy had shown some dogs for Helen, and then had shown some dogs that she had bred to some se- successful wire pointers. So. Um, Anyway, uh, fast forward after uh, Tie Dye and uh, some other dogs, um, Frank had the uh, the Scout dog out. Yeah. Okay, and they're littermates. Scout and Oakley. I mean, a lot of people know, but some don't. I have, we're littermates, and uh, uh, they're both beautiful dogs. And uh, Oakley was um, was a much slower maturing dog, so Scout was ready to roll at a young age, you know, and, and Frank took him and did great things with him. Um, but Oakley wasn't quite ready. And, and I'd seen Oakley, uh, a couple of times Kelly had shown him out East and, uh, just watching. Cause I always had a, you know, there's certain breeds you go watch whether you're in the mix or not. And, uh, I watched him. And then when I really saw him, uh, Greg strong had him for a weekend. And I'm not sure if it was many before that or after that in uh, Cleveland at the crown classic there in December. And, uh, I saw him and, uh, I said to Kelly, I said, is that the dice? She said, yeah. And chatted a little bit. And he was, ended up, he was going to Brazil, uh, while Frank was showing the, the scout dog here in the U S Oakley was going to go to Brazil and, uh, be shown by, uh, Max because, um, uh, Victor and, Kelly, they were doing some Basenjis or somehow they were a little bit connected. Okay. And then uh, he went to Brazil for a year. So fast forward the years up in Brazil, this is 2010. And that was the year of uh, uh, that we were campaigning Dodger and it was top dog Aubrey, the smooth. And, uh, um, so at the end of the year, there were some things going to go. Dog was going to go to Brazil, a smooth. That's how I met Victor, and we met Victor. And, and uh, that particular dog fell through. Long story short, oh, uh, Dodger ends up going to Brazil. So that's what the connection with Victor ended up starting was through Dodger, not even the wire hair pointer. So when – and I, I knew that uh, Oakley was down there and being shown by him with some of his handlers and stuff. But uh, I, nothing else was really in the mix. So at the end of Oakley in uh, Brazil, Claire, I don't had for that breed. It's like I don't want to call it a specialty breed, but there's not very many people in the country that have shown wire hair pointers at that extent, at that number of shows that have the experience. You know what I mean? Oh, it, they're a special. It'd be breed. like me trying to go to campaign a standard poodle. 
hey, it ain't happening. Special <laughs> breed. We you have know, to understand them. You know, you have to, oh, they're, they can they're, be a, and they're they can drastically, be... they're drastically different. Right. The majority of sporting dogs mentally, you know, they're lovely, they're wonderful, but they, they, you have to understand them. Anyway, um, Claire called and said, "Hey, I'm bringing this dog back. You know, you meant this is the dog you saw in December in Chicago or in Cleveland, and, and I didn't have any dogs." I said, uh, "I said, yeah, great." And uh, he came, and he was a challenge, you know. He was, uh, but but in order to do what he did, you have to have that temperament. I mean, he was wide open, you know. Never had a bad day, uh, you know. Tough dog, um, not aggressive, but tough and yeah. uh, uh, very manageable. He was not, um, you know, very very manageable temperament. Um, and uh, we started playing around a little bit with him and. Uh, he was doing pretty good. And I thought, you know, this dog, and, and as you've done, I'm sure, and everybody else that, that does it, you, you kind of look and see what's happening the next year. You know, who's got what, what's coming out, what's going on in your group or in your breed, you know? And uh, and uh, I, I told Claire, I said, you know, at the end of 2011, going into I said, he, he you know, we've, he could be okay. We, we might have a, let's, if you want to take a run at this. And she said, okay, so go to December in, uh, in uh, Orlando. Victor comes in. Um, I think they were bringing Dodger back at the end of 2011. And uh, he, uh, he wanted to talk about Oakland. And uh, so we sat down at the, uh, the Peabody, not is it the Peabody used to be where the ducks walk through the hallway of the hotel there. In yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I was sitting there and had a couple of cocktails, and uh, he said, uh, "I'll never forget." It. He said, "Well, what do you think?" And I said, "Well, I said I'm not big on predictions. I said I don't want to overstate what I think, um, but uh, you know, I think I think he's got it. I mean, I think he could he could do it." And uh, I said, "What do you want?" And he said, "Well." I want to do something nobody else has done with the breed. I love the breed. And he had had wire hair pointers in Brazil. And, and yeah. uh, you know, he had wire hair pointers, with, uh, I think, in Canada with Milton. And yeah. so he, he was big into the breed. He, he loved the breed. And he said, well, I want, to, I want to do something that nobody's done with one. I said, okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I had never, I'd never shown dogs for him before. Okay, we had done the smooth thing a little bit. He had co-bred some stuff with, with Amy. And, uh, but I never shown a dog for him at this point and uh i said okay so he said uh let me know what you want to do so i started doing my thing and and uh the rest is just kind of history but no, I, I, I have to I, I, there, there's dogs before oakley that um and and clients and and situations that put me in a position to do that um the, the, you know, um, I showed a giant schnauzer named Tempo for Robin Greenslade. That um, that was a great experience um, and a great learning experience um, because I had never pursued a dog ever in my life. And this is a funny story. Um, I never pursued a dog in my life. And I was on the Florida circuit when... Um, the Florida Street still moved, and you moved from, you know, what it started, Jekyll Island in Georgia was the first one, then you moved to Lakeland and all <laughs> yeah. that. Anyway, yeah. it was the Sarasota set, a couple shows or one, where, uh, you know, all the, the the Barnum and Bailey, the circus animals are next door, remember all that? <laughs> anyway, and I'd been, I loved Giant Schnauzers. They caught my eye somewhere, and I'd been watching Giants, and there was this lady who ended up being Robin, had this beautiful bitch. And, and uh, I had kind of put it all together because I like to do my homework. And I knew that it was the same lady that owned the, the giant 60 Minutes that Kimmy Pastella had shown. And but Kimmy was showing boxers for the Truesdales then, so I, there wasn't a whole lot of um, probably room for uh, giant schnauzers. And, and Robin showed her own dogs a lot, you know. That's a whole other story. Um, but she was getting beat this beautiful bitch getting beat. And uh, so she was parked by me where she had to walk past me. 
So one day, how'd it go? And she showed me an opposite ribbon or something. I said, well, maybe next time we introduced ourselves and name. And uh, fast forward one day at one of the other shows on that circuit, I said, lady, she walked by and she showed me an opposite ribbon. I said, lady, and I had never done anything of this in my life. People won't believe it, but it's true. I said, lady, when you get tired of losing with that one, you let me know. <laughs> and she spun around and kind of let, if you know Robin, that was the perfect thing to say to her because she's, she's, She's funny. She's quick witted. She's uh, uh, passionate about her dogs and, and very intelligent about the breed. And uh, That's funny. yeah, and she, I said, lady, when you get tired of little, you let me know. And literally a couple of shows later, on my, on my truck. And she said, were you serious? I said, yeah, sure. And she said, well, I've got to talk, I'm going to talk to my husband and maybe we'll send her out. She said, are you doing Raleigh? <laughs> And I said, yeah. And I said, I got two shows between weekends between um, um, here in Florida and Raleigh up north. I said, I said, okay. So you, so she said, you'd want to take her home. I said, yeah, I'd take her home. And then we'll meet back in Raleigh and evaluate where we're at. It gives me like three weekends with her or something. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we did that. I took her home. Tempo was her name. Lovely bitch. Fun, fun bitch. Ended up being the mother of Dora. The one that uh, the giant bitch that Amy showed that was number two working dog behind Matisse that year. Yeah. And, and great dog. Wow. Anyway, that was the mother of that bitch. So I take it home and uh, go to some local shows. She wins the breeds, places a third maybe or something, you know, just figuring it out. Get to Raleigh and uh, Robin comes to watch. She wins the breed and I will go third in the group the first day or something. And things are going well, I think. Well, Robin and Ken come and, and, and Robin says, well, I'm going to take her for the night. I said, oh, okay. You know, okay. so I'm walking around Raleigh or something. I look and here she is over by somebody's grin. And there is a pile of hair on the floor while underneath the table of this bitch. It's <laughs> just like a garbage bag full. And she brings her back the next day and I say, oh, a little hair off. She goes, yeah, now, now she looks at not another ribbon, not another breed the rest of the weekend. <laughs> she started laughing. And in the end, she said, just take her home and show her. So that was, <laughs> that, was, that was how that started. And then that she had at that point had never won a national specialty with a giant. And um, I had never won a national with any breed. And we got to uh, Hershey, Pen I think it's Hershey, Pennsylvania, that hotel where some nationals are or somewhere anyway for giants. And uh, we were running, we were in the mix all the way down to the end. And, uh, Ended up winning the breed. Um, uh, that was the same time that Taffy had Spirit out. Mm -hmm. So that was quite the favorite, but uh, we ended up winning the breed. So her first national and my first national win were the same one. I was on a giant schnauzer. So, but my point is that experience and lessons learned with, with clients and how to deal along with um, uh, back to the, uh, Marie Zink, the Dalmatians. Uh, she co bred dogs with John Bechey. Um, and uh, I ended up showing um, Dalmatians for them. And those experience, experiences and, and dealing with the people and the campaigns, all that led. And then obviously Dodger um, was a huge, huge learning experience um, about campaigning dogs and showing dogs. Uh, that's what led up to Oakley and, and, uh, and Victor and I. So, okay, well, here we go. So yeah. it took off that way. But I, I, I was very fortunate. I guess my point I'm trying to make is I was very fortunate to have the clients like we all do that, that get it and, and that are supportive. And, and, you know, if you have a bad day, they're, they're behind you, not micromanaging or, Oh my God, you got, you know, three best and you only won three of the four best in shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened? happened the fourth one? Well, they didn't point anything. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, I'm, I'm very, very grateful to all those people and clients. But uh, Oakley was one in a million. And then you, then along comes Orca. You know, and right. we all see Orca on the national stage, then Philip. Yeah. yeah, who knew that, that I was going to end up, you know, showing the dog here in the U.S. and ends up winning Crufts. But that, yeah. was, that was quite an honor. And uh, she's, uh, th there's one thing about when you, and I, I think you would agree, there's one thing in common with all these dogs um, they all just are a little bit different. They what? They're all just a little bit different. Yeah. They're all just, I mean, I don't mean from dog to dog, but for even for their breed, they all have something 
that that makes, makes them, them stand out, yeah. right? Or, or even makes them who they are. You know, yeah. um, uh, I knew Jack about Legatos. I mean, they came to this country in 2015. They're a lovely breed. I end up, I was looking for one for Victor. He had a dog in in Brazil, Bruno, that that only had a two generation pedigree, right from Italy. So we couldn't when they came recognized here. We couldn't register that dog here. He he it was it wasn't even his pedigree right. wasn't enough, right? So so he wanted a legato. So I mean that's like trying to find a needle in the haystack when they I mean it's literally 2015. They're not even literally recognized yet. It starts in January or whatever day it was, you know, before the guard, January. And I'm trying to find, so I'm talking to people, and I end up seeing a dog in Australia and finding the breeder of that dog, the Ken Trace Kennel, and just calling. And you know, it's ironic because Sabina and I have been friends ever since. You know, I brought a dog into this country. Orlando was the first one, a white dog. He did well, you know, but it was a little ahead of its time for the breed and for that, as we say, style of dog. It just it didn't really fit in. It wasn't time. But that relationship, I mean, that started something that even when I took a little year off from showing back in 2019, um, that, that we're friends and we've bred and we talk we talk a lot. <laughs> we have a great relationship. And and I, I'm I'm a part of that whole kennel situation now at Can Trace, and I'm very proud of that. She's uh she's got some beautiful dogs. And when Orca was born, I uh in the litter, I said, Who's that one right there? She goes, Well, that's a bitch that we're gonna I'm probably gonna keep. I said, That's a really beautiful bitch. And that's when the, that relationship with that bitch started even before she'd ever stepped in the ring, you know, and she had a lovely career in Europe before she even came here. Then, you know, we had COVID. Yes. So, um, didn't she win the uh, group of crust before she came here? Went second. Oh, second. Okay. But second we all there. noticed her. We all talked about yeah, her. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Before she came here. And then, you know, th- there was a, there was a hu- up, up about her coming here and who was going to get her and where she was going. And, you know, cause she obviously, she was very quality animal and people, yeah. But nobody really knew the backstory about me and Sabina and that bitch, you know. So it was I was very, very grateful and fortunate to have had her. And uh, and uh, she got here during COVID. And, uh, you know, we talked to Victor and and everybody didn't know what was going to happen with with COVID and, and everything else. So I actually got her here without an owner. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and, you know, because she needed to be finished and. You know all that stuff, so I figure, well, you know, if shows open up and and th- you know, I get her finished, and and Victor was interested, he 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 was going to do it if I if we wanted to, and it all worked out. It worked out great. Um, she uh, she had a wonderful career here, and yeah. then you know went on to to do that there, and but uh, I don't know, it's uh very. Um, I look at it now as retired as much as the dogs. I look at the people that were in my life, you know, or, or I met through dogs or the relationships. And, and I think a lot of the things that you learn, um, stay with you, even past dogs, oh, you know, no question, Bill. Yeah. you know, even past dogs, but, uh, some of my, who would think that the sport of dogs would put people from all areas of, life through you know but uh no they've done they've good, done good story about uh, back up just a little bit good story about oak and victor one of my favorites because this 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 uh <laughs> this, this puts out a little bit about me so we, we we're in we're in new york okay oakley was number one dog all breed he uh was doing great we had won we had won the group at the garden. I mean, just beautiful. And we weren't sure what was going to happen with him um, before the garden, even win, lose or whatever um, in that, that year. But we went down to Florida and he won several best in shows. So he's up to like 80 best in shows at the time after the garden. And uh, we're, we're having breakfast on Wednesday morning. And Victor said, well, what do you want to do? And, and I said, well, I said, you know, I, said, I think we can get our hundred. I said, the nationals in October, you know, let, let me pick and choose where to go between, and this is February, between February and October. And, and as you know, that's not uncommon for dogs to show through their national a little bit. 
trying to get my hundred. And uh, he said, he said, okay. He said, uh, are you gonna are you gonna keep uh, approaching the campaign like you did last year? And I said, well, hadn't really thought about it. I, I didn't think so. I think I'd just pick shows that might look, you know, decent for him without getting too crazy. We don't need to travel all over. And he says, well, he said, you know, I, he said I didn't. Uh, I didn't mind the way we did it last. She said that was fine. I mean, and it was it was costly, and I, I couldn't really figure out what he was getting at, you know. And uh, and I said, oh, you mean? And I, what I would do, it, I would give options every 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 three months. I would put the proposal together. Okay, here's what I'd like to do with the dog, and this is what you know it's going to require. Here's a second option, and what it's going to because he always wanted to know what was going on. And we all said, you know, it's just fiscally responsible in a business. You know, what are we getting into? What, what What's going on? And then the third way would be, well, if it just stayed with the truck and I just went everywhere, you know, here's what I thought would be realistic goals or expectations. Well, he never didn't do option A ever in the dog's career. And, uh, and I thought, oh, that's great, you know, but I never really thought it through. And I never knew this, this fact coming up. He said, well, I, he said, that's fine. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. He said, we'll, we'll do it to the national, hopefully get our hundred, blah, blah. He said, but I, I, you need to know something. Okay, what? Well, you know. He said, uh, you never, I, he said, how do you put it? He said, you never asked for anything special or any special go alone travel or do it and not give me at least one best in show. And I tell you what, Will, I was sitting at breakfast at that hotel, whatever that thing is now. It was the, the, the steward down there in that little restaurant. And I got all freaked out. I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God. Have I have known that he was paying attention to results and schedules and travel that closely? I'd have been scared to death walking in the ring every time. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, but it was impressive. It was impressive that sure. you cared enough. Because there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't even, you know, but he said, you never, you never ask to do anything special and not give me at least one, give us at least one best in show mm-hmm. that weekend. Okay. Good thing I didn't think about that, right? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. But yeah, they, they're, there's so many, I mean, we talk about stories and, and, and just talking with you brings up thoughts of each dog and some funny story or, or some, you know, some of them not really appropriate, but so, they're just funny, you yeah. know. And, no, yeah. and, and people don't know, like the judge thing, you know. We, 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 let's back up real quick to a, one of my favorite stories, and it's not, it's not disparaging about dogs. It, it's just human nature and people and, and well respected people. I was at um, the Invitational weekend. We was still in Long Beach. Irish setters. I there was I, Arias last year, and and uh, um, Jeff was there with Wendy. First day, th- this is one of my favorite dog show stories of all time. First day, Jim, Mister Reynolds did the breed in the group. Jeff won the breed. Jeff won the group. Okay, cool, great. You know, what I mean, was I bummed? Sure, we all want to win. You don't enter to lose, right? We don't. Nobody enters to lose. So the next day. Mrs. Billings does the breed in the group. I win the breed. I win the group. So we're walking up, Mrs. Billings and I and the other sporting dog players are walking over to the picture podium. And Mr. Reynolds had done the previous group or some was at the photo stand. And, you know, Michelle and Jim were very, very good friends, as we all know, and and well respected each other immensely, right? And uh, we're, we're walking back, and we're walking toward, and he's one back. And you know how people, I don't know if a lot of people, how quick-witted both of them were. Very quick and very funny. And uh, Mr. Reynolds says, oh, I see you put the other bitch up today. <laughs> and Michelle says, yes, Mr. Reynolds, I did. And they're kind of slowly talking. About, he said, well, that bitch is... Uh, so what he said, such a lovely on the go. Oh no, 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 no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm messing that. She said, that that bitch, my my bitch, such a beautiful, beautiful head. And it's true. That Wendy bitch had a gorgeous head. He said, that bitch yesterday yesterday had a beautiful head. 
<laughs> and Michelle not missing a beat says, yes, Mr. Reynolds, she has a lovely head, but from the ears back, there's no competition. <laughs> I mean, it's just them talking. You know, you couldn't say that to the owners no, or the breeders no. or people would freak out. You know, even to this day, Jeff and I laugh about shit like that. But it, but it, it, it's just so funny that they were. But see, they were judging dogs with positive attributes and explaining why they did what they did. Right. Maybe yeah. it was with humor or something. But 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 that that's my point of what's missing, you know, in in, in dogs. Yeah. And, uh, it's a, uh, I don't know. There, there's Those just lots, stories. lots of stories, lots of stories, yeah. stories. But uh, so back to the latest, what's that? Back to the latest thing with with, with Orca. Um, that that was fun. That that bitch is a lot of fun, and and uh, and uh, the relationships and the and I have a bitch here now. Two bitches, one I bred. That's lovely little puppy, and another one um, can trace dogs that uh, we bred that. You know, I'm, I'm going to show some of my own dogs. You know, Heidi has her Labradors. We've shown a couple of those, and so I'm not completely gone from the ring. Yeah, well, that'll be fine. You and you're you're thinking about judging, so right. Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah, you will like fun. it. I I enjoy it immensely. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I'm sure you'll love it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a last question for you though, Philip. If you were to meet the 20 year old Phil Booth, any advice you give him today? <laughs> uh buy a cat <laughs> <laughs> great seriously that was pretty good timing <laughs> um yeah i i think i would give some advice that that tom gave me and it, it sounds silly and it sounds um oversimplified but if you do it, 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 it's, it's great advice. And he said to me, just shut up and show your dog. Yeah, no, that's true. You know what I mean? I, and I don't, you don't mean that in a negative, no, no, addictive well, way. It, it, it's just you, you, how you look at the sport or how you perceive things can either allow you to enjoy it and move forward and be successful or it can put you in a place of negative worry, frustration. You know what I mean? Does that, that make any sense at all? Well, there's no question, does Phil. I understand that completely. And it is kind of just let the process play out itself. Yeah, um, and and and, and you, know, you know, there, there was two things that, that that him and Andrea told me that that I, I to this day really listen and really remember. And that's one Tom said, shut up and show your dog. Because he he did that, I was asking questions. And, mm -hmm. and stuff that was maybe relevant, but not really relevant. Just show yeah. your dog. Overthink trim your dog. Yeah, trim do your dog. The youngsters, so. Right. Trim your dog better. Condition it better. Do your best. If you're doing your best, then show your dog. Just shut up and show your dog. Yeah. And then, and then something that Andrea said, and you knew Andrea well enough to know, um, a little bit snarky, <laughs> a little bit of opinion. But she said, and, and this sounds horrible, but it's not when I explain it. Shit. There's only two reasons you lose: better dog or better connection. And the end, the first thing when you think about that, well, that's crooked. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a, you're, you're thinking about that's crooked way the connection part. But see, it doesn't have to be. Okay, first of all, the better dog comment. You may put up a dog differently than I would put up because you think it's the better dog. Not be like we talked about being subjective. Now neither one of us is wrong. In your mind, in the judge's mind, it's genuinely the better dog. Right. We don't have to agree with them. And the connection part, that goes to something that will probably be in my article about preference or favoritism, is the connection part could entail, okay, did you show your Irish setters present them exactly the same way to every judge? No. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you, there you were certain realize. judges that wanted them a certain way right, that you exactly. knew that you knew would prioritize a, a certain aspect of the dog over another. That that's that's kind of the connection part. If you, it's it's knowing what you're doing, really. Right, right, and, and who your audience is, who your judges. That can be defined as the connection part. 
But people want to, to so quickly think connection's crooked or a negative that, that it just um, it, it doesn't it doesn't play out. So yeah, the 20 year old Phil Booth would hear from me. Um, just shut up and show your dog. And, and, uh, and I guess be grateful, be thankful that you're doing something, making a living that you enjoy doing, you know, and don't take that for granted because there's not a lot of people that, that have the opportunity to do that. And, uh, it's very true. I used to wake up every morning and say, I, I, I get paid for doing this, you know? Right, right, right. And you wake up every, and you go to sleep every night explaining to somebody, you're not famous at the mall, right? That's one of, your, <laughs> that's one of, my, <laughs> that's one of my favorite Will Alexander lines. Um, <laughs> that's for another day. <laughs> yeah. well, great. Well, I hope we've had, a, I, I think we've had a fun talk. Yeah, you know? that was great, Phil. I enjoyed it. Uh, but but this could I could talk for hours because there's 500 other stories or well, we can or do a part two Phil part two <laughs> right and breeds and dogs and yep. you know um but uh, I'm looking forward to the next chapter you know I uh, I'm looking forward to judging I think that'll be enjoyable like you say you enjoy it I can't imagine I wouldn't um and I think it's it's we have a responsibility to try and do things for the sport to say, give back. That's a general term, but I think there's areas that maybe some people can, um, can try and not turn the tide, but try and direct the, the, the sport and, and in a little different direct in a little better, uh, more positive I had, way. I had this conversation with a handler one time, very famous handler, very well, they've done amazing things and we were talking about judging and they were saying that they wish the judges were more educated in certain areas you know and i said the problem is it's our turn you know it's our turn like we've been through the trenches like the judges before us it's our turn it's our turn to to step in the ring and and do the best we can of what we've learned over the last 40 years right and it's not it's not it's not confrontational or judgmental to discuss dogs. No. Why no. does it have to be? What, That's what, how we learn. When yeah. I started or when back, I can remember that, that the newer judges, when you'd watch groups or something, you'd have people sitting there, the, the Janies and Bobs and Michelles and Frank Sabellas and, and all the other ones that I'm forgetting that were, were just icons and or experienced in certain areas, you know, like, like Frank, for example sitting there with somebody and say, well, who did poodles today? Right. And you know the person, I did. Which is no disrespect, but it was somebody new, a right. newer person. But that person would would just suck up like a sponge anything that, that Frank wanted to say about poodles. You know what I mean? And today, I, I just, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe it's different. I don't see that. I don't well, see. Do you remember the days where we'd look at a premium list and say, "Oh, Mrs. Clark's judging in four months." Well, you upped your game for that right. day. You, right. know, you you right. aimed for that day, <laughs> right? And you have. I've got this young puppy. I want her to see. Right. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And and but people don't do that. It, it, it's so easy. It, it's so yeah. easy to to look at the 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 negative side of all this stuff. And I mean, we all get caught up in it. Oh, you know, sure. we all get caught up in it. But it's. Uh, I, I truly believe that the communication between exhibitors, judges, judges and judges, you know, instead of being so defensive, so, so defensive. Well, everybody's so easily offended nowadays, Philip, you can't say a word to them. So, right. That read that one last thing. Gare Pedersen <laughs> you know, says a conversation way back over a certain topic that he got a lot of flack for. But anyway, he said, he said, you know, remember this. He said, here's how I approach my judge. And we were, talk, we're, we're talking about discussing dogs and after a judge judges, et cetera. He said, if an exhibitor comes to me respectfully and open-minded and non-confrontational, I will talk about what I've done right. all day long. And conversation, said, not a confrontation, uh, I guess. Right. And he said, that's how it should be. He said, but from the other side. From the judge's side, he said, if that exhibitor goes to a judge 
with respect and and calm and you know in a in a not obedient but in a respectful pleasant manner to just ask questions the only reason the judges the judge won't talk is if they don't have an answer right and you, you think about that right why would you why would if you had an answer breed specific answer or reason why would you not discuss your decisions you can you never stop learning you know why would you not try and explain to somebody why you put their dog second behind the other one you know if they say if they approach it in a proper manner that communication i think is is very valuable and missing no, a lot no question is uh, growing up both you and i know that that's just the way it was right I remember, I remember going group two behind and under Mrs. Clark one time, and I asked her why, and what she told me was valid, and I took it. You know, right, yeah. right. I think that, uh, yeah, I, I, and and I think that that's that has to start happening again. And I think that there's certain aspects of of judging and and, and decision making that that um, that becomes comfortable, or just the answer du jour, you know. And maybe I'll think differently when I start judging. I'm not, you know, you never say never. No, but, no. But from from my but, perspective on a lot of stuff, I um, I, I know I, I well, I just have to see how I prioritize. You know, well, we're all human, and it's, and again, like like uh, you said earlier, it's all about the approach. If right. someone comes in in a very aggressive manner, yeah, what are you going to do? You know, right. it's, we're human. You know? Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. I agree. I I would I would definitely agree. So anyway, that was great, Phil. I appreciated that time. Thanks for having me uh, anytime and uh, good luck with your judging and all the stuff you're doing. You know, I'm sure we're going to cross paths somewhere. You're not that far from me now. You know? I know, really, right across the lake. And I think I might be going to get a hold of you to move some dogs throughout the country or the world. Hey, for me. There I, saw your ad. I saw your ad. <laughs> <laughs> so your advertising advertising dollars are working. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot. Hope it was All good. right, man. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks, Phil. That was great. I knew it would be because you always have great stories and you have a story for everything. So it was great. Great interview. Um, if you like what you're seeing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. You want to get a hold of me or, or, or find out what's happening in Will's world, go to Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips. And don't forget about the podcast every Thursday, the Dog Show Drive with Wayne Kavanaugh and myself. Talk to you soon. <laughs>